Hi, everybody. Episode 30. Moving on. Post-war East Asia. Of course, that means Japan. How do we deal with Japan? The Far East is ultimately even more important to our future peace than is Europe. Remember that we have communism in Soviet Union, communism now in China in 1949. Douglas MacArthur. MacArthur led the reconstruction of Japan with 400,000 soldiers. Remember, we had to create brothels because so many men were sent there and they got accused of raping Japanese women. So we had government-led brothels as a result. Top Japanese war criminals were put on trial. We talked about that. Like, what was there, like 20 of them that lost their lives? The U.S. In, insisted a Japan, that Japan adopt a democratic constitution because we want them to be a democracy in a capitalist country like us, not communist. This is very important to us. Okay, and then here's the years. This is uh, Mao, so 1950. Uh, there's a famous free Tibet movement because Tibet was its own country, but then when communism took over and Mao took over, then Tibet loses its independence, and even still today, Tibet wishes to be free of communism and of China, and they still are not able to do that. Uh, look, there's little tiny Taiwan that we talked about. That's where Chiang Kai-shek is going to go with his nationalist forces, and we disregard that whole China. This whole China we disregard. And then Chiang Kai-shek is in Taiwan. The U.S. recognized this new Republic of China as the true Chinese government until the 1970s, 1973. This is what we called China. Can you even freaking imagine? That doesn't make any sense. Republic of China, People's Republic of China. Mao, Chiang Kai-shek. We don't, talk to the, we don't talk to all of this, and we just only talk to them from 1949 all the way to 1973. Come on, man. Doesn't make any sense. Chiang Kai-shek and the defeated nationalists went to Taiwan in 1949. And there we go. Blue equals democracies. Red equals Chinese. I mean communist. Communist. Cuba. Fidel Castro. As a result, now one quarter of the world's population was under communist rule, especially with just Soviet Union and China. Huge. Uh, famously, is this us? Is this tomorrow? If we let communism take over, is the whole world going to be communist? And thus the Cold War. With the USSR achieving superpower status, the U.S. once again experienced a red scare, a paranoid fear of the spread of communism. It is the second red scare and it's most notable for the McCarthy hearing, Senator Joseph McCarthy. A loyalty review board was created to investigate more than 3 million federal employees for any communist infiltration into the government. Attorney General, who is the head of the Justice Department, created a list of 90 organizations with suspect loyalty to the U.S. This big, huge communist fear. Tom Clark was my biggest mistake. It isn't so much that he's a bad man, it's just that he's such a dumb son of a... Come on, Harry, watch your language. In 1949, the Smith Act of 1940 was used to try 11 communists. It was the first peacetime anti-sedition law since 1798. Remember, anti-sedition, sedition is if you're saying things against the government. So a peacetime anti-sedition law. And then uh, I graded papers out for the AP exam out in Salt Lake City, Utah. And one year it was about the communist Revo revolution. And so we had these on our shirts and it made national news because uh, people said that it was making a joke of the seriousness of communism. But it's called the Communist Party. They're called the Communist Party. So it looks like they're having a party. But Stalin is responsible for 60 million deaths. Mao is responsible for 60 million deaths. Um, uh, Castro, Lenin, all of them are responsible for a lot of deaths at the hands of communism. These communists were imprisoned, and that sentence was upheld in Dennis versus U.S. in 1951, the anti-sedition law. And then HUAC, HUAC, it's called, it's called HUAC. Sounds like I'm, yeah, HUAC. Uh, it was created by Republicans to investigate if communists were tolerated by Democratic presidents, HUAC, 1947. The House Un-American Activities Committee. You have to know it. The House Un-American Activities Committee. House of Representatives. The United States House of Representatives. 
Uh, I've said many a time that I think Un-American Activities Committee in the House of Representatives was the most un-American thing in America. Truman. That's equals McCarthy. HUAC equals McCarthy. HUAC first investigated Hollywood and ultimately ruined the careers by blacklisting many actors. You know that. One of the worst, hardest places that was hit was Hollywood. HUAC then focused on possible communist infiltration in the State Department. United States government. In 1948, HUAC member Richard Nixon prosecuted diplomat Alger Hiss, who was convicted of perjury or lying under oath. Lying under oath. Uh, this is Truman before uh, Nixon is vice president. Richard Nixon is a no good lying, uh, he can lie out of both sides of his mouth at the same time, and if he ever caught himself telling the truth, he'd lie just to keep his hand in. In 1948, HUAC Remember, Richard Nixon prosecuted Alger Hiss, was convicted of perjury. We said that. They call it the Red Iceberg because you're getting more and more and more and more communism. HUAC made Americans suspicious of liberal Democrats. Anna Kate, that's me. And most were conv convinced communists had infiltrated the government. Uh, even now, even now in this election year, uh, we have people saying that the Democrats are communists. I mean, obviously, the Republican Party and Trump calling us communists, which is far from the truth. Uh, clearly, Joe Biden is a moderate. Uh, he's not even close to me as a liberal. Soviet success in nuclear development, probably due to spying, intensified the threat of communists in our midst. In the mushroom cloud. In September 1949, the Soviet Union had exploded its first atomic bomb much earlier than the US thought was possible. And that was a lot because of the Rosenbergs and because of uh, Fuchs, another guy uh, uh, named Fuchs. I don't remember what his first name is, but they were traitors and they had traded this information to the Soviet Union to help them get that information. They were spies. In 1952, the U.S. exploded its first hydrogen bomb. The Soviets, one year later, beginning this Cold War. Oh, the Soviets had one a year later beginning the Cold War arms race. You have to know it is an arms race. We keep getting more and more and more and bigger and bigger and bigger weapons. Uh, the hydrogen bomb uses fusion and is a 450 to 1,000 times more powerful than the bombs dropped on Hiroshima. And the Rosenbergs. Poor Ethel Rosenberg is going to lose her life for being a spy, and she was not a spy. Most people believe now that she was not involved in spying of her husband. Her husband was indeed a spy. Julius and Ethel Rosenberg were brought to trial, convicted of spying, and executed. I'm sorry, lady. I'm sorry, nice lady. Your husband's a communist. McCarthy, 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 McCarthy. The Red Scare peaked with McCarthyism in the early 1950s. It's called the Second Red Scare and McCarthyism. He called everybody a communist. In February 1950, McCarthy gained fame accusing and then charging 205 State Department officials of communism. I have here in my hand a list of 205 names that were made known to the Secretary of State as being members of the Communist Party and who nevertheless are still working and shaping policy in the State Department. Nobody knows if it was true because we never got to see the list. McCarthy could not prove his claim, but regardless, it destroyed the careers of many, many public figures with public show trials, which you saw on the video that we watched. McCarthy. McCarthy charged Secretary of State Dean Acheson of knowingly hiring communists. This was absolutely not the case. For a brief time, McCarthy was the most powerful man in the U.S. Even Truman and Eisenhower, as president, didn't try to challenge him. And Edward R. Murrow, Edward R. Murrow, the very beginning of news, and actually back at the time, news that you could actually trust. Edward R. Murrow, famous newscaster, and he was very anti-McCarthy. Famous political car cartoons. Committee on Un-American Activities, HUAC. They're just barreling through. It's okay, we're heading communists. Don't mind the rest of these people that get hurt. I have it here in my hand, a doctored photo, a fake letter. In 1954, McCarthy went after the army. He had gone too far and was exposed as a liar and ultimately a drunk. He dies just a few years later. Truman's re-election and the fair deal. So, of course, we start with the square deal with Teddy, and then the new deal with FDR, and now a fair deal with Truman. 
The Democrats reluctantly chose Truman again, but they really wanted Eisenhower as their candidate. Instead, he's going to be a Republican candidate in the future. What's the use of going through the election? Uh, it looked very, very much like Dewey was going to win the election, and then uh, it turns out that Truman did. Oh, and that's such a famous picture. The Chicago Tribune ran early edition proclaiming Dewey the winner. It was not the case. So it was a pretty close election, 303 to 189, and the Democrats won back the House. It was a big upset. Everybody thought Dewey was going to win, the Republican. Truman revived, uh, received surprise support from farmers, workers, and most importantly, African Americans. Truman's Fair Deal program called for improved housing, full employment, higher minimum wage, better farm price support, a new TVA for uh, utilities and electricity, and the extension of Social Security benefits, more Social Security benefits for more people. Every segment of our population and every individual has a right to expect from his government a fair deal. I concur. I stand pat. You mean you'd rather be right than be president? Uh, but he was the first president to genu genuinely seek civil rights for African Americans. In 1948, he desegregates the army one of the very first civil rights actions in our country. Truman's Fair Deal programs were only moderately successful. There you go, integration of the military. So the Korean War, 1950 to 1953. North Korea, South Korea, 38th parallel. Today it is called the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone. This is where my niece had been for the past two years. Is this whole thing showing? Can't tell. The whole PowerPoint is showing. Can you see the whole thing? When Soviet and American forces left Korea, they left weapons and rival regimes, communists in the north and democracy in the south. That's how close China is, just over that river. Most of the action took place in the very first year. And then we go right back to where we started by 1953, when the war is over. On June 25th, 1950, North Korea and Kim Il-sung, uh, Kim Jong-un's granddaddy, suddenly invaded South Korea and nearly took over the entire Korean Peninsula. A bold and massive program of rebuilding the West's defensive potential to surpass that of the Soviet world. Truman signed the National Security Council ordering the quadrupling of U.S. defense spending. That's the military-industrial complex that Dwight David Eisenhower is going to warn about. Truman used Soviet absence from the United Nations to label North Korea an aggressor and send U.N. troops to fight there. Most of the U.N. troops were American troops. There weren't very many other troops. Famous corncob pipe. This is Gen General Douglas MacArthur. The person that's going to go from Japan, where we are occupying force in Japan, because we've made them get rid of their military, and they're going to just hop right over to South Korea and fight the war against North Korea. Truman ordered troops from Japan under MacArthur to defend South Korea. Uh, General MacArthur brilliantly landed behind enemy forces, that does an incredible job immediately. June 25, 1950. September 14th, 1950, look at North Korea. And then we get involved, MacArthur's attack, November 25th, 1950, and this is why MacArthur says to the Senate that he wants to keep going. He wants to lay 50 atomic bombs along this river right here, along the Yalu River, and he wants to keep going and take over all of Korea. And that's why he gets criticized, because he tries to go over uh, Truman's head, and Truman is the chief... Uh, the commander-in-chief, and therefore in charge of the U.S. military. And so he made um, MacArthur resign. MacArthur drove North Koreans back across the 38th parallel towards China and the Yalu River. We saw that Yalu River. The Yalu River. Thirty-eighth parallel, now called the DMZ, the Demilitarized Zone. An overconfident MacArthur was surprised by Chinese forces driving him back 
to the 38th parallel. That was the one they said in the video where they, the forces just keep coming. My phone keeps slipping. I keep being crooked. Can you see me all right? Uh, I'll have the boys home by Christmas. They weren't home by Christmas. And if you remember correctly, um, MacArthur wants to drop 50 atomic bombs, so he wants to still use atomic bombs. A humiliated MacArthur wanted to blockade China and bomb the crap out of Manchuria. I'm running this war. That's Truman. And then this is uh, Douglas, little man in the White House. They're talking about Truman. So here's MacArthur, what he's doing in the... Why can't you see everything? What's going on with my camera? Um, this is MacArthur in the Pacific compared to the Marshall Plan where we are trying to help people in the European theater after the war. And then Douglas MacArthur just wants to have more and more war. Oh, for heaven's sakes, I give up. Truman refused to allow this expansion of the war. And this is why he, uh, MacArthur gets in trouble with him. Public opinion, the firing of MacArthur. MacArthur publicly criticized Truman, so he was fired for insubordination because the president is the commander in chief. I fired him because he wouldn't respect the authority of the president. I didn't fire him because he was a dumb son of a gun, although he was, but that's not against the law for generals. If it was, half to three quarters of them would be in jail. Oi. Douglas MacArthur was seen by many Americans as a war hero, while Truman was labeled a pig and an imbecile. Remember, he was a war hero. He helped us to defeat um, the Japanese in the Pacific Theater. Truman. By appeasing communist Russia and China, Truman was also called a Judas. To err is Truman. That's funny. There's a famous quote, to err is human. To make a mistake, to err is human. To err is true. That's funny. It's funny. In July 1951, truce negotiations began, but were delayed over prisoner exchange issues. That, that is 51. We are now with um, Eisenhower. Peace talks dragged on for two more years as men continued to die and Truman's popularity plummeted. President Eisenhower fulfilled his campaign promise by flying to Korea to help negotiate peace, but he failed. Oh, right, because 51, 51 is still Truman. I lied. That's still Truman. 53 is when um, Dwight David Eisenhower becomes president. President Eisenhower fulfilled his campaign promise by flying to Korea to help negotiate peace, but it failed. But he actually went there. He's a general. He knows what war looks like. Seven months later, Ike threatened to use nukes, and an armistice was signed in 1953. Korean War left 53,000 Americans dead. It was from 1950 to 1953, and tens of billions of dollars spent to contain communism. Truman Doctrine, to contain communism. That's it. Have a good day.